So to, for right now, we're just going to do a little bit of an introduction in 3.3, which is CPCTC and circles. And we're just going to take kind of take a look at what types of problems in this section might look like, what CPTC stands for, and how we can use circles with proofs for triangles. So CPCTC is a really nice abbreviation because it stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And what this means is just when we have two triangles that are congruent, all of their corresponding parts are also congruent. And we've kind of already looked at this. We had, you know, just two triangles. We're given the congruent statement. We're able to name all the pairs of congruent sides based on that congruent statement, but we can also use the diagram. So we can now use this in our proofs, though. So say we have proved two triangles congruent already. We can use CPCTC to prove any of those other parts to be congruent. So here I have angle A congruent to congruent to angle D based on my statement. I have angle B congruent to angle E based on my statement. And angle C is congruent to angle F based on my statement. I also know that AB is congruent to DE, BC is congruent to EF, and AC is congruent to DF. So if we had those two triangles were congruent and we needed another piece, we can then prove that through CPCTC. Let's list our givens first and we'll also mark it on our diagram. So I have that TB bisects angle ATS and TA is congruent to TS. So TA is congruent to TS. I'm going to use the fact that I have that given of a bisector. So I'm going to say that ATB is congruent to angle B T S. And actually I'm going to name it STB just because I see that I'm going through that single tick marked line. So I know that's kind of kind of helped me with naming my triangles congruent. And our reason for that is just a definition of angle bisector. So now I have a side and an angle congruence. I know I'm probably looking for another side or another angle. And I see that TB is used in both of my triangles. So I'm going to say that TB is congruent to TB. Again, kind of a silly statement, but we have that reflexive idea. Now I see that I have an a side, angle, side, so I can prove my triangle is congruent. So triangle A, T, B is congruent to triangle S, T, B. My reason for that is side, angle, side. One of my sides I got from step one. I got my angle from step two. And I got my other side from step three. Make sure you justify. And five, I can prove angle A is congruent to angle S by CPCTC. Those are corresponding parts. Notice angle A is listed first, angle A S is listed first. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And we need to make sure that our congruent statement is true because otherwise it might be kind of difficult. If you if I said triangle ATB was congruent to triangle BTS, my letters would be in the wrong spot and I wouldn't quite have that CPCTC because I proved even though it's the same exact triangle, I named it wrong. So you just gotta be careful. In this section we also have circles. So, we all know what circles look like. O is the center of this circle. OA and OB are radii of the circle. And radii just connect the center of the circle to the edge. And this part is what we're most interested in. 
at least for triangles. All radii of a circle are congruent, so you have one more way of proving segments congruent if we have them in a circle. We have our lovely circumference formula and our area formula, so we can also kind of use these to answer some questions that we might have with circles. So here we see you find the circumference and the area of a circle if the radius is 10. First thing I'm going to do is just rewrite my formulas. So C equals pi times diameter or 2 pi r. Area is pi r squared. Round to the nearest tenth. So let's get our area in there. So A equals pi times 10 squared. A equals pi times 100. And 3.14 times 100, we just move over the decimal twice. So A equals 314. Now let's look at our circumference. So it's 2 pi r. So I have my radius, so I'm going to use this formula. So circumference equals 2 times pi times 10. Circumference equals 20 times pi. And if I calculate that to the nearest tenth, one decimal point, we have 62.8. Now I don't know what the exact units on these are, but I can just say that this is just units and that's units squared. Just to be proper and make our science teachers happy. Okay, here's a proof involving triangles in a circle. So we can use that idea of all radii are congruent, possibly. So let's write out our givens. So M E is congruent to D. Great, I've got two pair, a pair of sides. Now I also see circle A, so that means A is our center, and A goes to both M and D and E. But it appears that maybe A to E isn't going to be as helpful, at least for radii congruent purposes. So you could list them all. You could just list A, D, and A, M, because I kind of see those look to be like maybe corresponding parts of triangles. So I have that A, M is congruent to A, D, and that is by all radii of a circle are congruent. So I have these two are congruent. Now I mentioned that AE is a radius, but also if I had that it was congruent to itself, I have three sides. So AE is congruent to AE by reflexive. And now I've got side, side, side. So I'm going to say triangle. M E A is congruent to triangle. So I went through the one through the V. So I'm going to go D E A. You can name these triangles congruent differently, just so long as you are make sure that you're consistent. So that is by side side side. I got sides from step one step 2 and step 3. Now I'm trying to prove MAE is congruent to angle DAE. So that's going to be through CPCTC. Angle MAE is congruent to angle DAE. That's all I've got to put. That's all we're going to look at together for now. We'll continue work with CPCTC and circles in class. So I'll see you then.